Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year as today we are exploring uh, through day 247 of Bible in a Year as we're going through the Holy Bible in 365 days. Um, today we're doing another optional reading, um, that reading being Judith chapters 3 to 5. Um, just a little bit about Judith, just a reminder from yesterday. Uh, well, it's a reference while it references cer certain historical events, the book of Judith is best understood as story rather than a literal history. It is intended to convey the truth that God can use us, everyone to fulfill his will, regardless of one's place in society or one's limitations or sorrows. The story of Judith occurs in the 12th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Judith, a widow, enters the story in chapter 8 as one whom God will use to deliver his people. She spends her time in prayer but becomes aware of Holfernus's threats. She travels to meet him. She's described as being beautiful. Um, Holfernus is captivated by her beauty, holds a banquet, and becomes drunk. Uh, we'll chat about the rest later. But yeah, so this is the introduction on this. Today we'll be reading through chapters 3, 4, and 5. So we'll jump into it here. Um, chapter 3. They therefore sent messengers to him to sue for peace. In these words, we, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, the great king, lie prostrate before you. Do with us whatever you will. See our buildings and all our land and all our wheat fields and our flocks and herds and all our encampments lie before you. Do with them as you please. Our towns and their inhabitants are also your slaves. Come and deal with them as you see fit. The men came to Holfernus and told him all this. Then he went down to the sea coast with his army and stationed garrisons in the fortified towns and took picked men from them as auxiliaries. These people in all the countryside welcomed him with garlands and dances and tambourines, yet he demonstrated all their shrines and cut down their sacred groves, for he had been commissioned to destroy all the gods of the land, so that all nations should worship Nebuchadnezzar alone and that all their dialects and tribes should call upon him as a god. Then he came towards Estrelon, near Dothan, facing the great ridge of Judea. He camped between Geba and Scythopolis, and remained for a whole month in order to collect all the supplies for his army. Chapter 4 When the Israelites living in Judea heard of everything that Holfernus the general Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Assyrians, had done to the nations, and how he had plundered and destroyed all their temples. They were therefore greatly terrified at his approach. They were alarmed both for Jerusalem and for the temple lord their god, for they had only recently returned from exile, and all the people of Judea had just now gathered together, and the sacred vessels and the altar and the temple had been consecrated after their profanation. So they sent word to every district of Samaria and to Kona, Beth Horon, Belmain, and Jericho, and Echoba, and Asora, in the valley of Salem. They immediately seized all the high hilltops and fortified the villages on them and stored up food in preparation for war, since their fields had recently been harvested. The high priest, Jochum, who was in Jerusalem, at that time, wrote to the people of Bethulia and Bethlehem, which faces Esdraelon, opposite to the plain near Dothan, ordering them to seize the mountain passes, since by them Judea could be invaded. And it would be easy to stop anyone who tried to enter, for the approach was narrow, wide enough for only two at a time to pass. So the Israelites did as they had been ordered by the high priest Jochum, and the senate of the whole people of Israel, in session at Jerusalem. And every man of Israel cried out to God with great fervor, and they humbled themselves with much fasting. They and their wives and their children, and their cattle, and every resident, alien and hired labor and purchased slave, they all put sackcloth around their waists. And all the Israelite women, men, women, and children living in Jerusalem, prostrated themselves before the temple, put ashes on their heads, and spread out their sackcloth before the Lord. They even draped the altar with sackcloth and cried out in unison, praying fervently to God of Israel, not to allow their infants to be carried off and their wives to be taken as booty, 
and the towns they had inherited to be destroyed and the sanctuary be profaned and desecrated to the malicious joy of the Gentiles. The Lord heard their prayer and had regarded regard for their distress, for the people fasted many days throughout Judea and in Jerusalem before the sanctuary of the Lord Almighty. The high priest Jochum and all the priests who stood before the Lord and ministered to the Lord with sackcloth around their loins offered the daily burnt offerings, the votive offerings and freewill offerings of the people. With ashes on their turbans, they cried out to the Lord with all their might to look with fervor on the whole house of Israel. Chapter 5 It was reported to Holfernus, the general of the Assyrian army, that the people of Israel had prepared for war and had closed the mountain pass and fortified all the high hilltops and set up barricades in the plains. In great anger, he called together all the princes of Moab, the commanders of Ammon, and all the governors of the coastland and said to them, Tell me, you Canaanites, what people is this that lives in the hill country? What town do they inhabit? How large is their army and in what does their power and strength consist? Who rolls over them as king and leads their army? And why have they alone, of all you who live in the west, refused to come out and meet me? Then Achior, the leader of all the Ammonites, said to him, May my lord please listen to a report from the mouth of your servant, and I will tell you the truth about this people that lives in the mountain district near you. No falsehood shall come from your servant's mouth. These people are descended from the Chaldeans. At one time they lived in Mesopotamia, because they did not wish to follow the gods of their ancestors who were in Chaldea. Since they had abandoned the ways of their ancestors and worshipped the god of heaven, the god they had come to know, their ancestors drove them out from the presence of their gods. So they fled to Mesopotamia and lived there for a long time. Then their god commanded them to leave the place where they were living and go to the land of Canaan. There they settled and grew very prosperous in gold and silver and very much livestock. When a famine spread over the land of Canaan, they went down to Egypt and lived there for as long as they had food. There they became so great a multitude that their race could not be counted. So the king of Egypt became hostile to them. He exploited them and forced them to make bricks. They cried out to their god and he afflicted the whole land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians drove them out of their sight, and God dried up the Red Sea before them, and he led them by the way of Sinai and Kadesh Barnea. They drove all the people <clears throat> they drove out all the people of the desert and took up residence in the land of the Amorites, and by their mighty destroy and by their might destroyed all the inhabitants of Heshbon, and crossing over the Jordan they took possession of all the hill country. They drove out before them the Canaanites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Shechemites, all the Girgashites, and lived there for a long time. As long as they did not sin against their God, they prospered, for the God who hate iniquity is with them. But when they departed from the way from his ways, he had prescribed for them, they were utterly defeated in many battles and were led away captive to a foreign land. The temple of their God was razed to the ground, and their towns were occupied by their enemies. But now they have returned to their God. And have come back from the palace, the place where they were scattered, and have occupied Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and have settled in the hill country, because it was uninhabited. So now, my master and lord, if there is any oversight in this people, and they sin against their God, and we find out their offenses, then we can go up and defeat them. But if they are not guilty, of, if they are not a guilty nation, then let my lord pass by them. For their Lord and God will defend them, and we shall belong to the laughing stock of the whole world. When Achior had finished saying these things, all the people standing around the tent began to complain. Holferness, officers, and all the inhabitants of the seacoast of Moab insisted that he should be cut to pieces. They said, We are not afraid of the Israelites. They are people with no strength or power for making war. Therefore, let us go ahead, Lord Holferness. And your vast army will swallow them up. Here ends the reading. Wow, this is quite the assessment by Achior. Yeah, I mean, he, he pretty much pinpoints it. He says, you know, <clears throat> I mean, these are people, he tells the whole history. Um, them coming from Mesopotamia. Remember, that that's where <clears throat> Abraham lived. Or Abram, I guess, at that time. And then he's the one that eventually moved into Canaan. And then from there, I mean, he talks about Egypt and then living in Egypt during the famine. 
which happens. And then how they their God drives them out um, and dries up the Red Sea and then and then conquers all of those in the land of Canaan. Uh, and then how they're there and they and they've they're a mighty vast nation and army as long as they follow their God. And he he very much relates that this is what's happening right now is the only reason that they aren't large and powerful is because they're not following their God. Because if they are, then then they're in unstoppable uh, but he says if they're if they've if they've not been disobedient he says um, they will defeat us no problem but if they're being disobedient and if they're not following their gods then this is the time to take we're not afraid of them we'll go and make war with them and swallow them up uh, wow i mean this is uh, so true and so um Akir has a lot of insight on on this and uh i mean it's something we can Understand for ourselves uh, when when we are not walking in the ways of God, uh, this is what happens to those who deny Him, um, and so we see this in the book of Judith. Um, and hopefully, we uh, don't fall suit. We learn from this, and we learn uh, to walk in the ways of God, uh, to give God glory, and we give God glory by prayer. Let us pray, dear Heavenly God. We thank you for this day. We uh, we thank you that. You are master and Lord that you oversee us. Um, we pray that we would not um, fall in the ways of Israel um, and Judah and this time of, of Judith. We just, we, we know that just like Achor says that when we deny you and when we walk away from you that we are, we are not under God's guidance and protection and that we can easily be overtaken. Uh, may we always look to you for strength. May we always look to you for glory. For thine is the glory, the power, uh, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Day 246 is optional reading Judith. And we'll continue uh, through the rest of this week telling about Judith and um, the people of, uh, of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.